Introduction to CMake Part 2 The Sourcer Let's take a look at the Sourcer. In our case it's the demo folder and it's also the root directory. Um, let's take a look at the root directory cmakelist.txt. As you can see, uh, the first line describes the minimum CMake version. Uh, here we uh, describe the project name, which is demo. Um, here we specify the project version, in our case it's just one. Um, here we add a definition named def red yes, which basically gonna print out uh, to the screen yes or no, um, based on whether this directive is defined or not. Here we specify the list of include directories. In our case we are using the built-in variable project source div which represent our source tree and the include uh, subdirectory. We'll talk about the include subdirectory later. Here we specify a list of uh, link directories. Here we specify we would like to print the um, binary tree to the CMake output. And here we specify the list of subdirectories we would like CMake to process. In our case it's libslc. DLLs and EXEs. Let's take a look at the include directory. Well, we have only one header file and this header file contains a class and one method, a public method named getText, which basically return yes or no based on whether the directive def red yes is defined. As you can see there is no CMake list.txt in this folder as this folder does not produce binaries. It's only the include and contains only headers. Let's take a look at the libslc folder. You also have here a CMake list.txt and it's very simple. We just describe the project name which is uh, libslc and the subdirectories for CMake to process, which is lib1. Let's drill down to lib1. Well, the lib1 subdirectory also contains a CMake list.txt file. Let's take a look at that. And here we specify the project name, which is lib1, uh, the list of headers, the list of the CPPs. Uh, we um, add a library and we set it to be static and we specified our source files. Here we specify where we, we would like to install uh, the binary. In our case it's a static library so it's going to be under archive which is mapped to lib static. Let's take a look at lib.h. lib1.h uh, includes uh, our header file and we have one class named lib1 uh, which inherits from head1. Um, head1 have one method which is public and it's going to be available for the lib1 class. The CPP is uh, empty contains only the constructor and destructor. Let's take a look at our DLLs. Uh, they also have a CMake list.txt. And again, the project name is DLLs. And we specify a DLL1 subdirectory for further processing. So let's drill down to DLL1. which has also CMake list.txt and here we have a project name which is DLL1 the list of headers down like this, and the list of source files it's also a library uh, just this time it is shared um, we also specify the install Directive and nicer. Yeah. 
we specify that DLL1 should be linked with lib1 so um, we are doing it using target link libraries and we specify we would like to install our library at uh, lib directory let's take a look at dll.h as you can see we've defined um, DLL export for the Windows version I assume it's not going to take care of that so uh, well the DLL1 header file contains one class named DLL1 and has only one method called getText let's look at the implementation well uh, here um, we've we are creating an instance of lib1 and we are calling a get text which basically gonna return a string characters saying yes or no based on the following directive the threat yes in our case it should print yes so because we've defined it um, at the root directory so it, this directive is available across the project Let's take a look at the exes subdirectory. Again, project name and further processing of the folder exe1. Let's drill down to exe1. And again, project name is exe1. Adder files, uh, cpp files, and add executable as it is an executable. We're going to link um, exe1 with dll1 and we're going to install our uh, runtime, which is our exe, into the pin directory. Let's take a look at um, main.cpp. Here we basically create an instance of dll1 and we call the method called getText. Well, that's it for our source tree. Uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and find it helpful.